It sure was one heck of a weekend. What's up, peeps? Hope you're all doing well. As per usual, welcome back to the show. Against all legal advice, and thankfully so, I guess for your entertainment, it's former FaZe K now giving an official response to the Save the Kids scandal. A follow-up of his previous video, a very short one, where he never even apologized for the instance. This one being an investigation of himself to try and clear his name of the Save the Kids scandal and what seems to be to pin it all on someone else, that being Sam Pepper. So I hope you guys all enjoy, gonna break down the main points of which many others have already broken down this video of saying a lot without really saying anything at all and not touching on the biggest allegations against him whilst somehow trying to clear his own name. He starts out by saying against all legal advice, he is sorry, never meant to scam any of his fans while also saying he is no crypto mastermind. Intentionally try to harm, take advantage or scam anybody. I am no crypto mastermind, all right? I'm literally a content creator and I trusted the wrong people and it's led to this disaster that I'm in. And what was this uh, over, over a month ago now or several, several weeks, he has also said sorry for the first time, which is, it is good to hear. But I also wanna say that I am genuinely so sorry that any of this ever happened. It was never my intention, and if I could take it back, I would instantly, in a heartbeat, you guys, my fans, have helped me build the life I have today, and I feel terrible that anybody was affected. Like, this shit eats me up. Even though I was tricked by somebody that took advantage of me and my fan base. He then goes on to describe the amount of money that he lost, which uh, was not something that I expected. Claim that he lost $37,000 on this Save the Kids project, whilst also investing at least $55,000 for promo and other things around it as well. I'm gonna exactly break down to you how I lost $37,000 on Save the Kids. So let's start here with all of my wallets and transactions on Save the Kids. I have nothing to hide i'm showing you guys everything for full transparency so people have alleged that i sold for pure profit and then abandoned the project when this is just false i have costs going out days and weeks afterwards for the pure purpose of trying to help the project and despite selling on other wallets he takes time to note that he had one secret wallet that he did not sell any of his save the kids token on unsustainable thing like it literally doesn't make sense and there's a wallet that i have that nobody knows about that still has every save the kids in it and i didn't sell a single one so if i was focused on profit then why did i not sell that and it's because i was committed to this project long term we thought we would be able to donate and give things through my videos there was a bunch of charity tokens that were really successful and we thought we could do the same and to think i would participate in a rug pool that has my face on it it's kind of like saying you know hey uh i'm gonna go and rob a bank without wearing a mask and expect not to get caught. There's no way I would put my brother and my friend's reputations on the line as well. Which is a really odd defense when you think about it, when there's proof out there of him dumping all of his token on at least another wallet and large amounts of that token. So you not selling on one particular hidden wallet does not mean that you weren't dumping and also taking advantage of the anti-whale code, which has been proven by the way, reconfirmed already by someone like Muda, and I'm guessing gonna be further touched on by someone like Coffee. just because you didn't sell on one wallet doesn't mean you didn't sell all the other kids you had and participated in that dump to try and recoup your funds. It was about that still has every save the kids in it and I didn't sell a single one. So if I was focused on profit, then why did I not sell that? And it's been I, I don't know, dude. Why didn't you sell anything at all? I guess one of the ideas is, listen, guys, I'm not focused on dumping this token because I have one wallet that, uh, that you know, just it never sold. So, yeah, you can literally see that this account got Save the Kids. If you if you look at how much they have in Save the Kids, they do actually have the kids token right there. Never sold, received from deployer address. But in the same fucking video, like a minute before, he shows his wallet information. And one of them is OX881D60. So, again, let's look at the time here. Dude receives the actual, uh, d d uh, the token from the deployer address, right? To the point of 3.1 million tokens. And then immediately sends that around, dump some of it and whatnot. But I think what's more damning is the OX5AF wallet, right? So here's the fun fact. This only has 4.7 kids in it. But if you look at it, got it from the same address, the deployer, all right? To the tune of 6.2 million tokens. So more than whatever he was hodling in that new account that we just found out about. But immediately, listen, look at this. Look at the timing on this. Fucking within like what an hour within an hour guess what Fraser is doing dumping the token on pancake swap so 5AFAD is dumping that save the kids 
completely within the span of that day literally within the span of two days all right i'll give it two days dumped so it's like at the end of the day yeah sure you have some token sitting around you have one of your main wallets dumping and also participating in what appears to be the anti-whale code some of these transactions guys are only like three minutes apart okay within three minutes apart so i don't want to hear it all right at the end of the day yes if you were for, yeah you didn't completely like you know dump all of your tokens but we still have wallet addresses where that dumping occurred and definitely took advantage of that anti-whale code change where you could actually dump, you know, or transact every other minute, okay? So it's, it's, it's wild to me that we're even discussing this. Then he talks about every other former phase member on the now suspended list about how they only tried to sell as much to recoup the amount of money they invested or some like Tico not selling anything at all, which we already knew, but he goes, I imagine, to try and further clear their names because they are far less guilty than, than he seems to be especially when you know I have my friends and family and people I love who are invested and have their money in this. Like, why would I fuck them over? It just doesn't make any sense. So I wanna talk about my friends and brother for a minute. So Jarvis, he only sold really weeks after to try and pay me back for the loss that I had. During all of this going on, he's preparing for his fight, training eight, nine, 10 hours a day. He had no idea what was going on and trusted me to do everything. So moving on, Nikon, he made zero dollars. He only sold the amount that he put in, meaning he didn't make anything. Tico, Tico lost all of his money. He put money in and he even put a bit more in after it went out and lost all of that too. He didn't sell a single thing. And then he starts to put all the blame on Sam Pepper. Our last video was talking about Sam Pepper trying to do the same on K. So now we have these two firing back at each other to see who can be the bigger fall man. That's what it seems outside looking in as to Sam being the creator and the mastermind behind the project and even the director of the promotion of it as well. Family and most importantly, all of my fans. Trusting him, obviously, now I realize was a massive mistake. He took charge without anyone's permission and started to make all of the decisions. His control and power influenced the main dev who literally felt obliged to do what Sam said. Sam helped design the token, the art for the token, the website for the token, and fill the pre-sale. And he made all of the decisions that led to this current situation. This is a clip of him directing us for the promotional video that you've all seen. It was completely his idea and vision. My name's Kay. My name's Jarvis. Nico, Tico, we support that, nah. and we support, and I, uh, yeah, and I support, and I support. Save the kids, save the kids. And then he seemingly confirms that Sam was the one who actually changed the whale code, allowing people to dump their coins even faster than usual. But keep in mind, K and others still took advantage of that whale code. So despite that Sam might have been the one to choose it and actually enforce it, you still took advantage of it. So. To a lesser degree, you are still guilty of that. Sam doesn't care about me or my reputation, and he has no problem with breaking my trust and scamming thousands of people. So next up, I'm gonna speak about what happened to the anti-well measure, and everything I'm about to say has been investigated and looked at by numerous blockchain detectives. I wanna reiterate the fact that I have no technical background or knowledge. So the goal essentially was to have a system that stopped these wells that own a large percent of the token from dumping it all immediately. Sam insisted the devs to make the change to the well code. His reasoning at the time was that the people in the pre-sale wouldn't be able to sell enough of their tokens. It was completely Sam's idea to make this change and it would only be revealed later on in our investigation as to why he did that. There is a um, behind the scenes manager who mainly pushed this and this was Sam was pushing, trying to argue with the devs that the code should have been changed. So it was a lot less limiting. Um, originally it was argued down to being 10 minutes, but then it was eventually stated that they just wanted it to be one minute. The devs were reminded that they were contracted. So eventually we had to concede and make that change. And I honestly think one of the crazier parts of the video comes way late in it because he's been accused of doing this a handful of times in his past by both coffee and Muda. Not just one, two, or three times, but four or five, even more times than that in his past. He's been accused of doing something similar as to save the kids. So when he one says he's not a crypto mastermind and two would never purposely scam his fans, he never answers to those individual allegations. And instead, he kind of refutes that by saying he only took those deals because they were also giveaways 
for his fans. They included giveaways of those tokens as well. So people have questioned the coins that I previously spoke about on my Twitter, and I'd like to explain this. So I started out with trading these tokens like Dogecoin and SafeMoon. There was so much talk about them on Twitter and the mainstream media was covering them, talking about how people were turning into millionaires overnight. And on any of those coins that I was trading or buying as a hobby. I was never the owner or the creator, nothing premeditated like that. I just wanted to see what it was all about at the start. So after that is when tokens started to really approach me and my team. One reason why I was really happy to state my support for some tokens was the fact that it was given back to you guys through giveaways. Throughout my whole career, I've loved doing giveaways to my followers, literally things from PS5s to Amazon gift cards. He reiterates this a couple times in the video. It's like, hey guys, um, I, I gave away money, which means there's no possible chance that this could be a bad thing or that I'm a bad guy because I've given away lots of money. To, to money, thousands of dollars, everything and anything I have given back to you guys. It's always been a key part of my brand and it makes me really happy to do. You know, I genuinely at the time didn't think that there was anything wrong with it. A big part of what I do is brand deals and they get brought to me by various people and I treated these tokens just like any other company I work with. Me personally, I have declined the huge gambling deals. I've declined promoting OnlyFans girls to you guys. So you go and buy their stuff. Things that I just don't want to expose you guys to. And I guess because I was trading it at the time and they offered me these big giveaways, I thought it made sense. It was the first time that the influencer and crypto space have collided like this. And I was never aware of the negative impact it can have. You know, there were huge celebrities doing the same thing. And I think it's fair to say now that everybody's learned a lot. And he also says he treated these like brand deals, compares it to people like Kim Kardashian and rappers who have done similar things, which again, I don't think necessarily clears you of anything. And also his comment on brand deals is something very similar that Banks had said weeks prior to this video releasing of how K treated this. So we'll see if Banks has any more to say on this. Not that it matters too much, but FaZe Clan have clearly cut ties. And where do we go from here when he hasn't really addressed any of the main issues? Doing something so shady again, like this. So again, I will always, I'll always stand by these words and saying, I don't <laughs> think that Frazier has, has a malicious, like, Frazier isn't a malicious person. I don't think um, his intent ever was to hurt anybody or take money from, from his fans or anything like that. I think that, he was careless. I think that he didn't think things through. Um, I I think that he treated a lot of these deals. Again, if you go and look at Coffee's final video, I think he treated a lot of these deals as just simple brand deals. He's getting paid in the coins. Right. Um, he's promoting this product in his mind, just like anything else he's ever done. Because what we have is two seemingly very guilty people. Jordan Galen was not mentioned at all in Kay's response. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens with the former phase manager who apparently was tied to these deals, but maybe not extensively. So you have Sam Pepper accusing Kay. You have Kay now accusing Sam Pepper of them of being the ultimate schemer when it seems that both of them certainly had some heavy hands on this project, whether it was the promotion or bringing in talent. He never touches on any of his past accusations or what Muda and CoffeeZilla even further confirmed was maybe, maybe some accusations of light giveaway fraud despite him actually giving away thousands of dollars. There were still several accounts who won multiple of his giveaways, but most importantly, the handful of past accusations of pump and dumps were never actually addressed and someone like coffee has even said hey come on live to interview with me and i doubt that's going to happen and and coffee has already released an initial 60 second video and he says more is to come on this topic oh so i wasn't very convinced and that's just being open and honest on this video it seems his audience might think otherwise the video has certainly tailed off in the dislike direction but when it started it was doing just fine so certainly has a loyal fan base behind him uh, but a lot of the things i mean nothing was really said in this video what did you guys think about it i'm sure we're not done talking about it it seems week by week it does progress but against all legal advice k has now spoken up we'll see if that uh helped him at all in his legal battle and if any investigations are underway how they are progressing as well till next time you take care of yourself all right we got a lot to talk about this week a lot of fun stuff drink some water drink some coffee i'll catch you back here sometime soon take care